What's up everyone, this is Snicked back with another Royal Revolt 2 video. I uh, spent a couple of days away from the game, was actually out in the middle of nowhere doing some backpacking. Uh, no internet, no cell phone service, and uh, certainly no Royal Revolt 2, but uh, now I'm back and ready to, uh, to get to work again, uh, making some videos, and nobody's safe. So uh, where we're going to pick up is uh, right where we left off, which is with the third installment in the Elite Raids series. Uh, out on my uh, YouTube channel, Snicked, uh, S in the number one KT, uh, you can find the first two in this series. Uh, the first one was uh, with Creative 49. So Creative 49 is the uh, level 18, or number ranked 18 um, on the global leaderboard. A uh, really effective base, uh, great defense, uh, but I do <coughs> like visiting their base on a consistent basis uh, is, is pretty lucrative for me right now, uh, being at level 23 on the leaderboard. Uh, but that was in the first episode. The second episode featured none other than Master E, who it looks like just recovered the number one spot, so I can say that now with utmost integrity, that he is the number one player in the world. And of course, he is... Uh, been number one um, uh, for, I think, as long as I've been playing the game. <laughs> and um, he maintains number one pretty consistently, I would say, with about 98% uptime. Um, so uh, a phenomenal player, and he has an amazing base. I would, I would definitely review the Creative 49 video and then Master E's video as well, just to get an idea for what these elite bases look like. Um, that is, in a, in a tiny nutshell, the uh, the purpose of the uh, Elite Raids series that we're doing here is just to have a look at, at the top 25 bases, looking at things that they hold in common, maybe even some unique characteristics. Um, but it's a pretty rarefied air up there in the top 25, and um, most of these individuals who are up here are very active, longtime players that are constantly raiding each other's bases, um, and they're... They're taking inspiration from, copying, and stealing um, the best features of, of everybody else's bases. And it's a really kind of a Darwinian idea where the best base layout features and characteristics survive, and then the bad ones uh, die off. And so uh, looking at these bases is educational, and it's kind of like a lab or a, a forward experiment in, um, in optimizing strategy and base layout in Royal Revolt 2. So there's a lot to learn from not only looking at, but rating these bases, just in terms of um, how you prioritize your spell upgrades, your defensive structure upgrades, like your towers or your barriers. Well, barriers are pretty pretty self-explanatory, but especially your, your tower upgrades, which tower to emphasize. So in the end level, do you want skull, more skull or more fireball? All of those types of considerations. Um, should you get uh, ice resistance armor because frosters have been buffed up and are now now go up to level eight um, uh, after the uh, the 1.3.1 update. Um, so lots of things are, are coming uh, coming into play here, um, and uh, you know we're trying to pull pick some of those details out in the Elite Raid series. So I'll do a, do a formal introduction to the Elite Raid series in a different video, but that's it. <coughs> excuse me, in a nutshell. And so in this particular video. Uh, we're going to look at number eight on the leaderboard. I've actually looked at it a couple of times today, so this this isn't sight unseen for me. I like to usually do them without having gone through them before, but had a couple of technical glitches here. Uh, sorry about that, humdrum bug. But we are going to be looking at number eight, humdrum bug, <coughs> excuse me, on the global leaderboard. And so, um, as you'll notice here, I get about 169,000 gold, which is, which is actually a decent amount of uh, being up here at the level that I'm at. <coughs> excuse me. And then um, nine trophies, uh, which would indicate that the base is pretty formidable, but not impossible. And then 139 medals. And uh, the medals actually, um, since 1.3.1, and we went to this dynamic tournament medal calculation system, I find the medals are a little bit better and a little bit more precise of, uh, of an indicator of how effective the uh, the the bases defense is that I'm thinking about rating. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is a great place to look if you're trying to quickly assess, <coughs> excuse me, whether or not uh, you're likely to win or lose. Um, and by that, I mean, get a 100% get a 
or uh, you know a 95 to 100 percent victory I should say if you're going to bring the castle gate down entirely um, that's a great place to look at a glance to assess whether or not you can probably do that I would say at a hundred metals things get um, it's a it's a, a challenging base but certainly not impossible at 125 metals you're looking at something that's starting to get really difficult <coughs> excuse me and by the time you get to 150 um, it's going to be next to impossible for you to beat that base without scrolling or resurrecting. Um, so that's just a basic rule of thumb. I'm sure there are exceptions, but um, do take advantage of looking at the metal count here because I do think it is a little bit more uh, informative than the trophy count uh, since 1.3.1 began um, earlier this week. Now looking uh, specifically at Humdrum Bug's base, um, we'll do a brief overview here. Looking at the map itself, or actually, let's go ahead and look at the uh, at the troops and the towers because uh, that feeds really really feeds into the uh, the construction of the base. So um, Drumbug has has definitely optimized their wave composition, so the the mix of troops that they're using in their castle gate waves, and adapted that to the design of their base. And so um, that's something that. Um, some people don't necessarily do, um, but it's certainly something that you'll want to do. You want to have an integrated defensive strategy, and by that, what I mean is you want your towers, your defensive structures, your base layout, so the layout of your path, and then you want your waves to work in concert with that. And by that, I mean you want them to work together. You want everything to kind of be one kind of coherent whole. Um, and so that comes down to timing, waves, you know, where do the waves hit, and you can tell that <laughs> pretty easily if you walk through and do your test your defenses. Um, and um, is your is your base constructed so that your your wave composition can take advantage of it? And uh, Humdrum Bug's done, I can tell, has done some significant thinking on this point, and uh, it really is, it really has turned out to be a great advantage in their base design. So looking at the wave composition, we have R Blasters first, Pyromancers, Mortars, Paladins fourth, uh, and then are, are, I'm sorry, Frosters uh, fifth. And so it looks like starting from the back, Frosters, there's probably, <coughs> excuse me, one per wave, which is really at this point in the game, all that you need. But it is definitely important that you include a Froster in your waves. Uh, I've been a big proponent of that for a number of weeks now. Mentioned that in, in I think, almost all the videos that I've done and have, uh, have talked about that in the forums or on the Facebook group uh, the major Facebook group as well that I'm a part of, because um, it, they're very important in terms of running out the clock on your opponent. So if you're trying to not necessarily kill your opponent, although that's not that's not a bad thing per se, but if you're trying to defeat them by s kind of stalling them and slowing them down such that they're not able to reach the gate, or when they do reach the gate, they have an adequate time to bring it down, uh, which is more ultimately your goal and kind of what you want to be what you want to be uh, shooting for in constructing your defense here in the elite level and in the end game, the frosters are are phenomenal for for accomplishing that. Um, so a high level froster, um, they go all the way up to level eight now, and it looks like as of 1.3.1, flare probably again buffed uh, the frosters, um, and so the slow effect that the frosters ice damage applies to the hero into the raiding party can end up shaving. Uh, quite a few seconds off uh, per application, and the cumulative effect of that will, um, that occurs when there's a froster in each wave can can completely change the outcome uh, of a uh, of a raid to the tune of 20 to 30 seconds. And so um, it's subtle, and it builds up over time, and it builds up wave by wave. But ultimately, uh, frosters um, are, are hugely supportive and are a huge support element to, uh, your melee troops and your DP and your range DPS dealing out damage as well as your towers, but then also in their own right. Um, I mean, their primary function isn't so much to deal damage as it is to slow you down so much that everything else can deal that much more damage, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit more of an advanced kind of mechanic to the gameplay, but, um, everybody that's, uh, everybody that's, to, uh, around the top of the leaderboard is including frosters in their waves. So that should tell you something uh, right there. So looking at the bottom, we have firebolt towers, blockades, <coughs> and skull towers, as you would expect from an opponent at this level. The firebolt towers, I'm surprised, maybe not surprised, but um, 
that that's maybe my only kind of major critique of this this design is that the firebolt towers are featured primarily and then the skull towers uh less so <clears throat> and ultimately i think humdrum bug is going to find that that does them a little bit of a disservice uh, to their defense because the skull towers are the superior tower between the two um it's good to have a mix of them because you want to diversify because each of them are susceptible to uh different uh different spells uh and different forms of attack and each one has uh, unique forms of resistance to spells and certain types of attack. Uh, fire for Firebolt Towers, and then Blunt for Skull Towers. It's kind of the uh, the two two themes there. So you want to have a balance, but um, on balance, the Skull Towers ultimately uh, has more hit points and has much higher damage at you now when it's fully upgraded. And it, the way that the trajectory of the bombs that it shoots out at higher levels. Is, uh, is very dynamic and almost impossible to deflect, especially compared to the old bomb tower. And so um, that's something that they may want to consider switching around. So the base itself, uh, just in brief, is uh, the crux of the base is it's designed for ranged DPS. And what I mean by that is um, after the initial approach, uh, you go up and there's a hard right turn. And at this point, you have a choke point. The base goes out up into the right into kind of an elongated loop pattern and then comes back down into a 180 degree hairpin turn. So right there uh, is a choke point and up and to the left kind of diagonal across from that first 90 degree turn is a firebolt cannon and the firebolt cannon is laying down basically what we'd call suppressing fire um, in that first 90 degree turn and the idea is to not allow uh, the raiding party to effectively pass through there. So um, skull, uh, so cannons and R blasters are important, primarily cannons, uh, at bringing that down. Otherwise, the hero runs the risk of having to solo the kind of the middle portion of the entire base, which can be really slow going and fraught with a lot of danger because this is a challenging base. So let's go ahead and go into it and we'll see how things play out in practice. The blockades and the towers are not clustered together. They're spread out really well, reasonably high level, so it's really difficult to hit two at a time uh, without going through a cooldown, uh, without going through multiple cooldowns. I'm going to spam uh, our blasters and pyromancers here at the very beginning. And I want to take down this skull tower as soon as possible, just because it is uh, really devastating, especially to pyromancers. I'm going to come up here, hit this to te tear down this wave, and I'm going to spawn two cannons. And I'm going to keep moving on just in the hope that those cannons can lock on to the uh, to that tower that's across the way there because it'll be important not impossible to get through if that tower is not brought down but it will be really difficult to do so once again skull towers are the priority especially when you have pyromancers because pyromancers just <laughs> get wiped out by skull towers and um, when that's most of what you're most of what you're spawning um, you are going to want that. Okay, bring that down, tagging this, backing off for just a second to regenerate some health. So something that's important here, and I'm going to do a separate video on it, but is the idea, and this is a little bit advanced, uh, is the idea of tagging. Um, and tagging is basically just something uh, that I came up with, um, nothing too creative per se, but it's just is an idea that I came up with, which basically involves hitting towers with enough DPS to where your pyromancers, your R blasters, the AI will come through, and unless you do a scream, the AI is going to hook on to those towers and is going to attack them, um, kind of coming up behind you. So you can continue to advance into the base and maybe forage a little bit ahead, um, but what, what you'll see is that um, <laughs> you can leave a number of towers behind you without having really dealt with them in any major capacity. And if you're spawning pyromancers, especially pyromancers because um, uh, they need to be able to effectively deal out uh, range DPS and then um, they need to be able to effectively deal with the tower. And so pyromancers is the best for that. Now you can see that there's cannons that I spawned I uh, did a great job of bringing that, uh, bringing down the, um, bringing down that firebolt tower. Otherwise, these guys would still be about halfway behind since I took out that choke point. Okay. 
All right, so we brought down the base and we got victory.